Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So today we have some VTuber related news to go over and in a shocking twist, it does not involve any mistakes or drama involving Niji Sanji's management who has somehow avoided controversy for the past 24 hours or at least any new ones. So congratulations to them. But we're going to start off with some good news for V Shoujo who announced that they have a new VTuber coming to their roster. This VTuber will be debuting tomorrow on May 13th, and this is the VTuber in question named Henya, who of course is a cute lolly model. You'll love to see that. Now, if this was a month ago, we would be asking the question of what does her fellow the Shoujo member think about this lolly VTuber model, but that VTuber has since left the company, so we don't have to worry about that. But nonetheless, it is very cute. A lot of people are very excited to see who is behind this VTuber. And you can place your guesses right now to see if you are right when she finally debuts on Saturday. Because I think it's going to be very obvious if she is the tea kettle because her voice is very recognizable. And of course, Pikami is the main person a lot of people are speculating that is behind this VTuber model. And you know what? If I was a betting man, I would say the same. It is a no-brainer for V Shoujo to pick up Pikami. It, she has a huge pre-existing audience who is very excited to see her return to making content. And she is also a very versatile VTuber who would fit in with their roster really well, or really any roster for that matter, because she speaks both English and Japanese. Just imagine all of the collabs she could do with both the Japanese and English sides of the shoujo. It would be a really good opportunity for everyone involved. But yeah, it's it's really a no-brainer. And in terms of the new identity or VTuber model, if it is in fact Pikami, I don't really know how it works with Vom's project, who she was with before. I don't I don't know if they own her IP or maybe they don't, and she just wanted to have a new VTuber model and persona. Who knows? But this is all speculation for now, but I think it is a very good, solid guess to think this might be Pikami uh, making an appearance as this latest V Shoujo member. Now, we are going to move on to some more VTuber related news. This is pretty interesting stuff coming out of Hollow Live. So, Cover Corp just launched their new studio, which costs around 2.7 billion yen. They mentioned it was filled with high-end motion capture devices and recording equipment to make high-quality content production. The entire studio area size is said to be more than 10 tennis courts. So yeah, Hollow Live and Cover Corp has been dropping shekels left and right, really showing off all of that revenue they are generating as a company. I mean, you have this and also Hollow Live City coming this summer. They are really putting it all out there, but this is uh, some pretty cool news. Uh, just goes to show you the commitment to high quality production that Hall Live and Cover Corp has. And, you know, they have so much space to do activities now. Like, what what will they be doing? Well, we know Hall Live has a lot of crazy, exciting projects, and having all this space is going to lead to some really cool stuff. So, yeah, just a cool story here, and uh, we'll be looking forward to whatever they have cooking up out of this. So I want to change gears a little bit. There's a couple of like system or, or platform related news I want to go over. There's some crazy stories. You might have seen this. So apparently YouTube is beginning to crack down on ad block. So they have made some very shallow attempts before to prevent people from using ad block on their platform, but nothing serious. This seems like their first step to actually combat this. Now, here's my thoughts. I've seen a lot of content creators celebrating this. Now, those seem more like intrusive thoughts you probably should have kept in your head. But yes, this is a, this is a win, question mark, for content creators. If ad blocks are completely taken away, let's say nobody's using ad blocks anymore, YouTube content creators are going to make more ad revenue. That's just the natural flow of things. That's nice. I would enjoy that. That's a good thing, obviously, to make more money. But at the same rate, I understand how annoying ads are. Okay? I get it. And I, I, I would rather the viewer have the choice 
to opt in or not without having to pay for YouTube Premium, for example. If you really hate ads that much and it ruins the experience for you, I don't have any sort of shame directed towards someone who would use an ad block. I it, it just it is what it is. Like I greatly appreciate anyone who takes the time to watch ads, especially the 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 true warriors out there who will watch long ads just to support their favorite content creators, whether it's me or anyone else out there. You guys are great. Super appreciated. But I also understand people who use ad block. I get it. Ads are annoying. And I don't want you to have to spend money that you don't want to to get YouTube premium. I don't take it personally. It's not about me or anyone else. It's about the ads, which are very, very annoying. At least I can say on YouTube of, you know, comparing it to Twitch, the ads are a little less annoying. They're not the worst on YouTube. At least you have the skip option on any sort of a long ad. But Twitch is the real problem. You know, when you, you open up a stream and you have six repeating ads, unskippable, that totally ruins the experience. At least YouTube experiences aren't ruined by ads. They're more just kind of, it makes it a little tiresome sometimes. But like, again, uh, I this is an interesting development. I wonder how far they're going to push this whole thing, if they're really that serious about it. But we'll have to wait and see. And, uh... Another story coming out this time with Twitter. This is uh, interesting. This has a lot of people concerned. So Twitter and Elon have been expressing their intent to purge inactive accounts. Accounts that haven't had activity in a few years. So on the surface, this looks decent because, you know, a lot of inactive accounts are taking up names and just taking up space on the platform and they really serve no purpose. However... There's a good reason for a lot of inactivity. A lot of people are inactive because something happened, right? Uh, Whether it's the extreme examples like someone passed away or the less extreme but still very reasonable uh, reasons to want to defend an account's existence like people graduating or moving on from content creation or just moving on from their account and wanting to archive, you know, keeping the account up to archive activities of someone online. Like, I think... This should have a very low bar set. Like it should be all accounts who are inactive with 10 or less followers should be white. Like they obviously aren't being used and they weren't used much to begin with. And that will knock out a lot of accounts. There's a lot of holder accounts where people just took a name and never used it. And if you're any sort of a person, you know, if you're a regular Joe Schmo reply guy, and let's say this person passed away and their family wants to still have their account still up, if they were using their account at all, even as an average person, you're gonna have at least a few dozen followers if you were any bit active. Like, you'd, you'd have to be active enough to make it worth saving, you know what I mean? But the main focus is, of course, on beloved content creators. People bring up deceased content creators like Etika, for example. Like, imagine if they took down Etika's account, there would be justifiable outrage over something like that. And then you think about content creators who have graduated or moved on. Think about someone like Coco, like, are they going to take down her account? It just seems very dangerous, this policy, if they take it to the extreme and just do a flat out removal of all inactive accounts. They need to have some sort of a uh, a caveat on there to keep it to people who are truly inactive and not only just inactive from the years they haven't touched their account, but also they weren't active in the first place. So that that's going to be pretty concerning to see how that plays out, but not as concerning as this. This is so strange. Elon Musk is considering launching a dating feature on Twitter. And I just, yeah, uh, this is not good, ladies and gentlemen. So I think it's no secret that there is a massive grooming problem on Twitter. I mean, it happens on basically every social media platform, but Twitter is notoriously bad for this, where minors are being lured in by adults and ending up in adult spaces and getting taken advantage of. And I cannot stress how important it is if this happens, this dating service, it better have the tightest regulations ever. Because this will be a tool for grooming 100%. If the bar is set low, people will take advantage of this. And that is 
very scary to think of. Um, if they have this feature, it better require like government ID and a ton of strict policies because I know for a fact there will be groomers lining up left and right to take advantage of this service to lure in children. And of course, people lie about their ages online and this will be a real problem. But uh, yeah, cool it with this this feature. I, I don't like this. This is uh, bad, bad vibes for sure. But uh, that's going to do it for this video. Lots of topics in this video. We kind of parkour many different spaces. But uh, please share all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.